go. All right, guys. So we're back here for the third video of this. We're going to skim these spots off. It's been about 20 minutes. This mud sets up pretty good. Again, I'm using a quick form, quick set or a pro form 20 minute mud, which is my go-to over USG. They carry this at Lowe's and they carry this as the supplier I use for sheetrock. So I always have my water first. It makes it a little easier to mix up. This stuff can get messy if you don't know what you're doing with it. No question about it. But I figure I mix enough pans in my life that uh, it's pretty easy. I try not to make too much of a mess. Now this is a little soupy, a little thin. Let me add a little bit more and we'll get in there and skim these off. It'll probably take about five minutes maybe, if that, to go across these three little spots. I'm gonna use a 12 inch knife this time. <clears throat> I ran with my 10 first. So give me a second here. <clears throat> now, like I said, this townhouse was finished probably a year and a half ago, two years ago. And, uh, you know, this is, the only, this is the only one I've had to repair so far. I didn't finish these, but I am doing the, the newer models that he's, that the builder is, uh, the builder's building on the other side over on the other side of this neighborhood. Now mix this just a little bit thinner for my final coat than I do for my when I tape and block it. Now let's give it a quick check. Make sure it's uh it's hard. It's hard as a rock. Okay, so if you see any little lumps like this here, you can see I'm just gonna give that a little scrape, and make sure it's flat. Alright, now if I was gonna wet sand this, because I see a lot of guys asking about that they've heard about it i have yet to see a video on wet sanding but you can do this with a sponge um with the 20 minute mugs if uh like i'm gonna throw this up here now you see it's a little bit rocky so i'm gonna double it out just a little bit just to blend it that's all so that you can't see where i did the repair at this will be painted tomorrow and then you see i still have some lumps in it but they'll smooth out as i finish with it so I'm simply just gonna make it not quite double wide. But just enough that I can cut this edge here, cut this edge here. Then I'll bring it across the middle, make sure my knife blade cuts in there a little bit on both sides. Make sure this is nice and smooth. Now if I was gonna if I was going to sponge sand this, which I have done in the past, I would just let this set up. Don't let it completely dry. You just want it to get hard. Okay? And what happens after it gets really hard, like I would leave that little lap mark here, but even then I can take that almost out. Now, I could come right here and just sponge sand this on the edges with a wet sponge and a bucket of water but I don't want to let this get completely dry. It's a pain in the butt if it gets completely dry. You, you still want it a little bit damp. And literally all you're doing is sanding off the edges and just make sure it's smooth on the, um, on the inside. Now you can do this with a regular sponge, like your kitchen sponge or something like that, but you want to use, uh, 
I use a pretty good size one when, I, when I've done it before in the past. I don't like the results as well as I do if I'm sanding with a, a sanding pole, for example. Like I'll take a sanding pole across this, it won't take me very long at all. Now this time I'm gonna pop this down a little bit so I can come underneath it. I don't wanna get mud all over there. Brackets here. Now we're check this. Now see, just a little bit. And I'm gonna blend it in now. That's a stretch back there. Now see, another thing I'll do, if I was to let this completely dry and come back tomorrow and skim over it, when I go around, when I do this, it would most likely bubble up with air bubbles. And for those of you that do take the, you know, the time to let it dry and then come back, you're gonna, uh, I have a video about that, about how to get the, the air bubbles gone. That way, you're not dealing with that because it's a pain in the butt. And in fact, I have two videos on that. If you look back in my back on my channel, so I've got this about where I want it, and I'll show you guys when I'm done here. We'll take a look across the ceiling, and I'll show you that it's completely flat. Now, again, this is all with 20 minute mud. This will be completely dry by tomorrow. And I'll come back, we'll do the final video of the sanding part. And that'll be that. So, that was that part. Let's get over here and finish this up, this little section here. Now what I'm gonna do here on the first one, is there was a little butt joint. I'm actually gonna finish this butt joint out first. And I'm gonna pull the flat that I fixed into it. I had to get some wet off my fingers there, sorry. Now see, I'll probably wipe this two or three times. You see how the air bubbles in it. I'll cut this edge here too as well. Now granted, I don't do this often with 20 minute mud all the way through, but in this case, I didn't have any perform blue lid or whatnot. Now I'm gonna scrape this a little bit. To get that edge off there, that little lap mark there. Okay. And now I don't wanna to touch that too much over there because it's already flat. So I'm gonna come into here. I'm gonna go there. about the end of my mud. This stuff, if you mix it right, it'll last 20 minutes. If you mix it wrong, you got about 10, maybe. So did you see how my knife cut in there on this, on this move here, watch. I'm putting a little bit more pressure on that side. But being that I cut it in, it's flat. And there it is, flat again, see?
Now I'm gonna come right here, cut this corner here a little bit, catch that edge right there, boom. Now I can sand that little bump there or I can make it smooth again, like that. I don't wanna go too far into that butt joint. Now this right here, is gonna sand out perfect. Now let me show you here. Look, what we're looking at here for the final coat. What's that, Tom? Now, if you look across the ceiling here, you'll see that they're flat. Even that one over there, it's catching a lot of light. But when that dries, it's going to be completely flat. I'm going to sand it. And I'm not going to sand it that hard. But when I sand it, I want the dust to fall almost straight down because there's a lot of nice stuff in this house. Um, this is a common thing that contractors have to go through. We do, uh, we do about 100 houses a year. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 80, 70 or 80. Um, this year we're tracking well over 100, but you know, houses move. The next house I'm going to show you guys on the video is a house that's actually moved. It's the other side of this townhouse on the other one. And you'll see where a beam is completely twisted a little bit and the tape is completely popped off. And you'll see how, I call it delayed shrinkage, but you're going to see how the beam actually shrunk up to the corner beads are curved like this. I don't know whether the sheetrock pulled up in there or it was a micro lamb that shrunk up that much, but it's, it's, uh, it's drastic. And that's the next repair is the next townhouse over. It'll be the next set of videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Um, I'll come, we'll come back when I sand this, uh, tomorrow and, uh, wrap up this, this video for patching these little cracks and making sure people pre-fill their houses before they finish. Thank you.